it's like when you're playing Nogi, you have to play a lot of knee shield guard because if the guy's standing, <laughs> there's not a lot of grips you can do. You can control the ankle, you can play a little Delahiva. You're limited kind of a reverse Delahiva and coming up on single legs. Okay, those are the most effective attacks. But when you play knee shield guard, it kind of forces the guy to have to go down on his knees. And that's what I want, is we want to play from here. There's a lot more options when he's on his knees than when he's standing when it comes to Nogi game. So the most common pass you see is uh, the guy on top putting the knee in here. Bringing the knee cut in. <coughs> Still recovering from a cough. All right. So here, when we're playing knee shield, we want to make sure we reinforce our frame. Okay. I have my arm on his neck, and I'm reinforcing it with my right hand, and my knee is going to go up into my forearm. See how my knee slides in my forearm to reinforce everything. This is just to create a good frame here that you can't break through. If you relax too much, it's going to collapse your knee and start to pass. So you really need to keep this frame. That's what come, this is where your guard recovery and defense is going to be off of. So this frame here, reinforce, this hand goes on the shoulder, this hand grabs the wrist, and we keep this frame. That way if he drives into us, it puts pressure on his throat, and he, so he can't really put that much pressure onto his own throat like that, okay? So now, our goal here is to push him away a little bit and bring our foot across, almost like we're giving him a leg grab. And that's what we want. We actually want our legs to come all the way across here, okay? And I know that's counterintuitive, but it's actually a really strong position. Because what I'm going to do with my right hand is I'm going to reach around his knee, and come underneath his leg. Okay, so we're forcing the leg drag, and then we grab his leg like this. So now if he were to try and leg drag me, he can't really bring his knee to the opposite side. I've stopped his knee from being able to come to the opposite side, because his knee would have to go over here, to this side to actually get a leg drag position. Okay, so we're forcing him to try and leg drag, but we're not actually letting him get to the full position. So once I'm here, I'm clasping with the gable grip, and I bring my elbow on top of my knee. That's really important, because I'm maintaining my frame. If I don't put my elbow on top of my knee, he can crush me still and drive his weight in. And it's not over, but it's better if I keep my elbow on my knee here. Okay, so now his base is way off. He can't really base to this side except with one hand, which is okay. So I'm here, gripping my gable grip, pulling with my elbow on top of my knee, and now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this foot and plant it on the mat and do a like kind of a twirl with my hips. Like I'm trying to open up my hips and bring them to the outside. So I'm doing this motion like a reverse butterfly, okay? <coughs> like a reverse butterfly sweep. So over here, he's knee cutting, knee across. We're framed. We push, bring our foot onto the hip or across, and I reach my right hand underneath his leg. Get the gable there. Here, it's a really strong position. Now from here, I'm just gonna tilt and open him up. Now what's so good about this position is it's a sweep, but it also sets up the strongest leg lock opportunity in Nogi, in my opinion. Because now that we're here, you see his legs hooked over my leg here, that's fine. All I'm gonna do is bring my leg on the inside, grab his shin, so I'm here with the gable grip. I'm gonna reach with my left hand and grab his shin. What this does is it's gonna stop him from being able to extend his leg as I open my leg, okay? If I don't do that and I'm trying to open my leg, he can follow my leg with his foot, so extend, and I can get stuck. So when his leg is bent, I create like a really good choke, Kimura type grip here, open up, come to the outside. Once I'm here, I'm finger fouring my leg and extending them across to his far leg. But still finger fouring. Now it's important that you figure four instead of just straightening your leg because I need to keep this knee here so if he tries to sit up. If he sits up, this knee is going to keep him on the ground, keeps his hips on the ground. If I extend up like this, he can sit up still and I don't have a lot of control over him. So I keep the figure four, even though it may not be as tight around his thigh, because I want to keep him on his back here, okay? Constantly underhooking this leg. This hand is here, controlling. If he tries to sit up too much, I can push on his neck, stop him from coming up. Now, what's good about this is if he tries to come up now, his leg is extended. All I'm going to do is reach over the top here. Now, this is really bad for him. But in this position, you can set up the most brutal of heel hooks. Because with a normal 50 50 heel hook, my legs are exposed to a, a, a counter attack. In this position, there's no counter attacks he can do and he's not spinning anywhere, and it's the inverted heel hook here, which is the worst kind. Boom. He's not gonna be able to spin. If he spins, I'm gonna fall in, and he's gonna get really hurt. So I'm here, controlling, using the forearm, my blade of my forearm here, not the meat of the forearm, because if you use the meat of the forearm, it slides. There's too much uh, muscle here that it can slide on. If you use the wrist, it's not sliding anywhere. It fits right neatly in his heel, and then I fall, put my back to the mat, turn. I don't just come across. If you just come across, it's not going to give as much pressure. You want to grab, grip here, drop your weight back, 
That's what's gonna give you the pressure. You're a lot stronger when using your lumbar to extend backwards rather than using your obliques and abs to try and turn. That's one mistake a lot of people make when it comes to heel loads, trying to turn too much. What you really need is just to be, get the grip and fall immediately backwards. That's what's gonna give you the pressure to hurt the knee. Okay, one last time. Full movement here. Remember, we have to push the, his away so we can get the leg drag position. Grab the gable grip, plant my foot, and tilt. Once I'm here, bring this leg on the inside, sitting up, figure four with the hands, bring the leg to the outside. Then we're here. Reaching over as he tries to sit up and extend, catching the ankle. Once I have the ankle, it's done. Fall back with the ankle, the heel. Remember, this is for ADCC type rule situations. Okay, or expert no knee divisions where heel hooks are legal. And know you have to be aware of heel hooks. You have to be uh, constantly aware, constantly defending, and constantly attacking them to have a successful healthy game.